Good afternoon. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. At this time, I'd like to call the September 13th, 2022 Planning Board meeting to order. May I ask everyone to stand with us for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. Do any members have any conflicts of interest or disqualifications with respect to any of the items on the agenda tonight? All right. Hearing none, we have a quorum with five people. Are there any changes to tonight's agenda? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion, uh, entertain a motion for approval of the agenda as presented. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Second. All right. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Agenda is approved. Are there any changes to the June 14th, 2022 meeting minutes? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion for approval of the minutes as presented. I'll approve the minutes. All right. We have a second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. The minutes from the June 14th meeting are approved. <clears throat> been a while we got rusty <laughs> are there any items of old business we don't have any old business so on to our item of the night pb 22-11 this Bissell professional group a request to amend the unified development ordinance chapter 10 definitions and measurements to change the way multifamily building height is measured in plan development residential district. Thank you, Mr. Right. Chairman. Ms. Um, first, I'll just start with a little background of the request. Um, this is a request to amend the UDO with how height is measured for multifamily structures in the PDR district. PDR is a plan development residential district. You'll see there it says legacy district. And what that means is that the district is no longer allowed those that exist or quote unquote grandfathered. Um, so this amendment would, would apply countywide, but with that in mind, it's only in the PDR legacy district, which is false. That's the only one that we have active. Um, the three multifamily buildings in the FOSS development were built taller than the 35-foot maximum building height um, set by the developer. Building three was corrected. They were able to uh, change that roof line, lower the pitch, and bring that into compliance. Um, the 35-foot was set by the developer and is enforced through um, their board of commissioners approved terms and conditions document, preliminary plat use permit, and their final plat. Um, in regards to multifamily structures, the UDO does require a minimum ground floor elevation of two feet above finished grade. Um, and the applicant wishes to exclude um, the required two foot in elevation from how height is measured. This amendment would add a section to um, the height exemptions um, in the UDO that would exclude the two foot of height from measurement of multifamily structures and again only in that PDR district. Um, I had a few phone calls um, from y'all once the packets went out um, and asked how did we get here, how did we get this far, so on and so forth. So what what I did was just pulled some of the, we, we have logs um, of conversations with customers and so we just pulled those together and this is from my log um, Kevin has his own that's available if you wish to see that but um, and January on January 5th of this year um, the model um, townhome building permit was put on hold because it didn't meet the multifamily design standards it was inconsistent with the BOC approved architectural and designs of the structures um, and not being compliant with those approved plans that we talked about in January we had a meeting um, with Ryan home staff and that would be the county manager um, Kevin and myself 
Um, we did discuss the two foot elevation requirement and that that two foot did count towards um, the height measurement. Um, throughout several renderings, the plan was brought into compliance with the exception of that two foot required elevation. So the developer added a note to the plan that they would be elevated that required two feet above grade. So when the building permit was taken off hold and issued on um, the 10th of February, it, there was a, a condition printed on the front of that building permit, again, that the maximum mean roof height was 35 feet and that a height certification would be required because it, it appeared to be fairly close. And typically we require those height certifications if it's going to be within a foot um, of maximum height. Um, to expedite review, staff did not require the builder to redraw the plans again to, to um, put that two-foot elevation on there, but allowed that note um, and with the condition placed on the building permit. Mid-April, um, a building inspector um, was concerned that it was uh, too tall. The building one was too tall. Um, so with the assistance of the false job site manager took a rough measurement of the mean roof height and he indicated that it most likely was too tall. Um, in June, um, Ryan Home staff contacted the county about a way forward um, because they couldn't get a CO or certificate of occupancy or certificate, certificate of compliance, I believe is what it's called nowadays for the building. So staff went over several options. Um, number one would be to amend the terms and conditions document, preliminary plat and final plat. Um, that is the preferred method since that is specific to the development, but that was gonna cause um, too much of a delay. So the text amendments that you see before you um, or that we'll go over was what was presented. Just a reminder of how the UDO requires us to measure height. Height is measured from grade to the mean point of the highest roof surface. So from the peak to the eave, you take that midpoint and then grade to grade is your height. So this would be the exception that would be um, added it, for multifamily buildings in the PDR district. And it says for buildings in legacy PDR zoning districts that are subject to the two foot raised floor elevation provision, the two feet required to raise the finished floor elevation shall be excluded from the building's height measurement. Kevin was kind enough to help me with the drawing here. So this you can see is the one we just looked at in the UDO. You measure from grade to the midpoint of the highest roof surface. So what this text amendment would allow is um, to not count the first two foot measurement for that raised elevation, that raised slab or elevation. It doesn't have to be a slab, but it can be a cross space. So you wouldn't count the first two foot of height towards your height measurement. Um, there are some potential conflicts with Imagine Curry Tuck. Excuse me if I call it land use plan. I've been calling it that for 31 years now. Um, since the plan was approved through a public hearing process, um, doing the text amendment this way and allowing the buildings to go taller than um, what's approved on the plans, the 35 foot height, changing the way you measure height could, could conceivably be um, in conflict with the land use plan and, and there may be compatibility issues or concerns from the neighbors that you know they were not involved in the in the plan change process instead of um, rather it being a text amendment um, let me get here just to remind you of the review standards um, for a text amendment um, one is the text amendment consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the land use plan and other ap applicable county adopted plans, is not in conflict with the provisions of the ordinance or the code of ordinances, is required by change conditions, addresses a demonstrated community need, is consistent with the purpose and intent of the zoning district in this ordinance, or would improve compatibility among uses and ensure efficient development within the county, would result in logical and orderly development patterns, 
and finally would not result in significant adverse impacts on the natural environment, including but not limited to water, air, noise, stormwater, wildlife, vegetation, wetlands, and natural and the natural functioning of the environment. The staff rec recommendation of the text amendment involves whether um, the text amendment meets those review standards we just went over. Um, as presented, staff recommends denial of this application for the following reasons. That the proposed text amendment is not due to change conditions as the maximum building height of 35 feet was established by the developer. Because the false PDR zoning district has height requirements solely for that district set by the developer exceeding the maximum defined height as is currently measured in the UDO is not consistent with the intent that was established in the terms and conditions documents um, and those plans that we discussed, which limit the height to 35 feet. And there are some potential inconsistencies with policies of the land use plan. Um, one of the, oops, sorry, I got into marks. And um, I just wanted to back up a little bit and talk about that planned the PDR district and what that district was was basically the developer got to set his own zoning ordinance per se he got to set his own some setbacks his own height requirements so when i say set by the developer that's <coughs> what i was referring to um and with that i'll be happy to answer any questions Where is it? are there any questions for staff at this time All right, we, we may end up coming back to that. That's fine. Is there anyone present to represent the case tonight? All right, could you state your name and address for the record, I'm, although I'm sure they've got it. Mark Bissell, 3512 North Croatan Highway, Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Yes, sir, thank you. Mark, the clicker's up there for you. If you yeah. need your presentation. Am I queued up? You are ready. Well, thanks for the opportunity to um, present this proposed text amendment. Uh, I admit the situation is a little bit awkward. Um, the way we got here is a little unusual, but I think that we have a workable solution that um, can easily solve the problem that we have here. Just, Just to get you oriented to the project, this uh, there are three sets of townhomes that have been constructed at the FOSS development. This is building one, which is the one closest to the entrance. It's a three-story townhome with garages in the rear. You can see a lot of attention has been paid to the detail to make these buildings attractive and an asset to the community. This is looking at it from the entrance boulevard off of 168. You can see the first three buildings. This was taken some time ago um, before the second building was fully completed. And you can see that the third building was had just been framed here. This is probably sometime close to the time that the, the height issue was, was discovered, maybe a little bit before that. And then here's a view of the finished product, building number one, looking toward 168. And I'm going to go out of sequence here because I think that, you know, I'd like to go back a little bit farther in the history um, to kind of help you fully understand how we got here. Uh, the, the FOSS PDR was first approved in June of 2019 with the terms and conditions document uh, approved at that time. Uh, the developer established dimensional standards, uh, as Tammy said, including height, and that height was established at 35 feet. But it was the following year that Currituck County adopted the Currituck Station development standards in June of 2020. And that amended, that is where the two foot height uh, requirement for the finished grade, the finished floor to be two feet above established grade. And that applied retroactively to, to PDRs, even though PDRs had been written out of the zoning ordinance at that point. But so, it, so that then applied to FOSS. But 
nobody actually recognized at that time that it applied to the FOSS development. So then uh, the design and permitting process of the townhomes, the design really began in the summer of 2021. Um, and there were a number of um, design iterations and meetings with staff and so forth to make sure the aesthetics met the requirements of the UDO. And the building permits for those first two buildings were issued in February and March of 2022. So I want to go back to this slide. Then this shows, <clears throat> you know, once they had come up with this attractive design, um, when the initial well, first, when the initial plans were submitted, they weren't even aware of the two-foot separation requirement between finished grade and uh, the first floor. So they went back and added steps. And what this is showing you is how those, um, those steps were added to the front of the building. And of course, there are other changes that needed to be done to, to the building plans to, to accommodate that, that grade change. But they actually didn't have any idea that elevating the finished floor was going to put the building over the height limit according to the UDO definition. Um, and, and I know that the staff believes that they explained the measurements, but my client really didn't understand it. Or they would not have built these buildings with these roof pitches um, that resulted in this problem. So the problem was discovered when the first two buildings were really nearly ready for the application for a CO. I think they, the first building was two or three weeks away from the CO application when, when that uh, height problem was discovered. <coughs> so we, we studied the language of the UDO to see if there was any way to measure these buildings in a way that would comply with both the two foot first floor above the established grade requirement and the total height of, of uh, 35 feet that's outlined in the PDR terms and conditions. And we just couldn't find a way to make it work and we turned with, the, with the specific language that is in the UDO. Now I had had that two foot uh, grade separation requirement been present when the original PDR was approved, we will probably would not have set the height for FOSS at 35 feet. We could have set it at 37 or 38 feet just as easily and everything would have been fine. But you know, that two foot requirement is something that came later. So, you know, so the two buildings have been sitting there ready for CO until this height is resolved. The third building had been framed, as you saw in that picture, but it hadn't been finished to the point where it was impossible to tear the roof off. So the roof was torn off of that building and the eight and 12 pitch was replaced with a six and 12 pitch to bring that into compliance with the, with the 35 foot height measurement. Uh, at this point, it would be prohibitively expensive as well as unsafe to reconstruct the ones that have already been completed. You know, the eight and 12 pitches are more attractive, but you know, my client would have sacrificed the aesthetics to avoid having a problem with this UDO compliance. As far as, you know, tearing off the other two roofs, not only are the roofs complete, the inside is drywall, the insulation and ductwork are installed. This would be very difficult um, and it would be unsafe because there are occupied homes right behind these buildings. So here's the justification for the amendment. The amendment that we're proposing is that for buildings in legacy PDR zoning districts only that are subject to the two foot raised finished floor provision paragraph 5.7.3 C5, the two feet required to raise the finished floor elevation shall be excluded from the building's height measurement. This is written so narrowly that it can only apply to the townhomes in FOST. 
So it basically gives you the equivalent of, of an amendment to the uh, terms and conditions change that the staff is advocating. Um, there are exceptions to height measurement that already exist in the UDO. This would just be the third exception. Uh, as I said, it only applies to legacy P PDRs, and there's only one that's active, as Tammy indicated. So it really is a FOST amendment. Uh, it it uh, is simply added, uh, as I said, as that third uh, exception, and it's worded in a way that keeps from having to go through a four or five month process of amending the PDR, amending the preliminary plat and the special use permit, and amending the final plat. All the buildings just sit there. So, yes, there was an oversight. It was unintentional. Um, this is the only development that I'm aware of that has actually built townhomes since the two foot raised finished floor elevation requirement was adopted. FOSS is the only development that this amendment can ever apply to because there will no, be no more PDRs. Uh, my client worked with staff, uh, and I worked with staff, and I actually thought that, that we were in agreement on this approach um, and, until the uh, staff report came out. And I still think that it's a, it is a workable solution. It is the workable solution. Uh, as I indicated, amending the terms and conditions now would just you know, these buildings would sit vacant until January, and they couldn't even be marketed until January. So it would be two to three months later before they would actually be occupied. So that's six to seven months out. We really have tried to find a solution here that works for everyone, and we think this is it. We believe this does meet the seven review standards for text amendments. Now, we do not see any conflict with the land use plan or other plan. Now, it's not in conflict with the UDO. It amends the UDO to solve what's a unique problem. The change condition is the, that the UDO standards changed after the PDR was approved. So it is required by change conditions. Uh, the community need is that it allows the completion of, of this development and homes to be occupied. We think it's consistent and compatible. Um, staff does support a 35 foot height, uh, or 37 foot height in this development. Uh, it is compatible with the neighborhood, and, um, and there are obviously no adverse environmental impacts. We think it meets all seven tests for the approval of the amendment. So here's the finished product. Um, before I make a closing remarks, uh, Greg Knapp, who's the division manager for Ryan Holmes, would like to make a couple of remarks as well. Thanks, Mark. Good evening. Uh, Greg Knapp uh, with Ryan Holmes, the division manager. Uh, my address is 4525 South Boulevard, Virginia Beach, 23452. Thank um, thanks for taking time tonight to uh, hear this out. Um, as, as Mark indicated, um, this has kind of been a process for us, um, and some of the uh, roadblocks we ran into uh, we weren't really aware of um, until we actually came in and sat down with staff um, and started to discuss some of the architecture um, uh, with them. And we started this process back in early summer of 2021, uh, where we, discard, we discovered that um, our initial submission wasn't meeting the intent of the, um, the PUD uh, architecture that was um, approved. In doing so, we met with staff several times, um, highly focused on getting the right aesthetics that would fit in, into this corridor um, and delivering the right product um, for this PUD. Um, and I think we, we came up with a, a very, very nice end result. Um, the buildings look really nice um, driving down Route 168. Um, I, I think, you know, during the process, um, we discovered that the two foot um, raised foundation uh, was a requirement. Um, and in doing that, as we were so focused on the aesthetic approach, um, we were asked to uh, put that into our plans uh, to resubmit the permit. So we put that into our plans, had a footnote um, called out, and uh, received 
permit following that. Um, during the process, um, I know it was mentioned that uh, building height was discussed. Um, it was never clearly discussed on how it was defined um, and how we would be held accountable to that um, until the, the actual point of uh, three weeks before CO on building one. Um, and it was shocking to us, um, and, and it's, it's uh, <coughs> an unintentional mistake. We probably should have paid closer attention uh, to the UDO and some of the ordinances that were underlying here at the development. Uh, but uh, it wasn't clear to us. We had a building permit. We built to the plans um, that stated the, the height that is, is built out there today. Um, we, it's unfortunate because we do have a 612 roof pitch um, that we could have changed uh, early on in the stages, and we could have met the intent of the um, building height requirement. Um, since then, um, at, at time in April, we were notified um, from staff and a building official um, that uh, we were over the building height. Um, and that's when we came in and met with, with the county staff to try to find a solution. Building one was completely finished. Building two was only two weeks behind. Uh, building three was in framing, um, and we had the ability to make that change um, where it was safe and uh, amenable to do. So here we are um, since that approach. Um, uh, we met with staff to try to figure out what was the best way to, to move this forward um, in the least amount of time. Um, considering that we had buildings under construction um, since February. Um, and it's nine months here today uh, with not an active sale or um, anybody occupying that home. Uh, and we did that, and as, as, as Mark alluded, uh, we thought that we had a uh, plausible solution tonight for the text amendment. Um, and unfortunately, the, the, the report came out in a different light. Um, and we're here today to um, see through um, some relief on building one and two and asking for uh, your blessing um, to grant the text amendment. I can stand by for uh, any questions. Does anybody have any questions for either one of them gentlemen? Or are you coming back up? Yeah, let me just... Uh, Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Knapp? We may come back to that too. So, hang, hang tight. And all I want to say in closing is that we have a situation here that occurred by accident. We have a reasonable solution that applies only to this development. It really does make it the equivalent of amending the terms and conditions, as staff is suggesting. It causes no harm and no future difficulty for the county. Uh, it solves this problem as ex expediently as possible at this stage. And um, we hope you support the request, and I'll be glad to answer any questions. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Biss Mr. Bissell right now? Are there other options you could take other than tearing the roof off of these two uh, units? Or, yeah, two units, yeah. Are there other options you could take to put you them into to bring the measurement down to 35 feet from the ground? Yeah, with, without having to do that, are there other thing, other areas you could uh, explore before doing that? Not that we've thought of. You know, we, you know, they they built up landscaping around the the sides of the, the building. buildings, and you know, but you know, then the then the two foot height uh, requirement isn't met, uh, so. Why well, you kind of, kind of box in the new process and resubmit information? I'm not exactly sure. And to get it approved, is that not accurate? I'm not sure. I just, what was, could you say that again? Yeah. I, understood I understood you could, you could keep, keep the, the buildings, buildings as they were. Maybe I'm maybe I've misunderstood something. But you'd have to sort of go through it, another process to get them approved. Right. We could keep the buildings as they are, either by getting this text amendment approved or by starting over and amending the terms and conditions document for the PUD, having a, a public here, a community meeting, a public hearing on preliminary plat amendment and special use permit amendment and amending the final plat that's already gone to record. And that is a, an arduous process for something that can be solved pretty easily here. But it seems to me you could have started that process several months ago. Well, they started this process in, in June. Yeah.
So there are <laughs> options you can take without t tearing the roofs off. Right, there are two options that we know of. And one is quick and one is long and arduous. How many times did the planning department have issues with the heights of the buildings? And it, I mean, looking at Ms. Glaive's notes, it seems like it was, the builder was aware of it more than one or two occasions that there was, a, there was an issue. I, I'm just confused how the builder, again, I'm not a construction person, the builder will keep building knowing there's an issue. Well, they didn't know there was an issue. Didn't they know it was an issue after, after while they, they were building, building the one, the, the first building, building and, and they, they knew there was, was an issue at that point? point? The first building was, as Mr. Knapp indicated, three weeks from requesting a CO when the, when the height problem was discovered. The second building was right behind it. The third building, they were able to correct. What you're saying is building one and two were built almost at the same time. They were. We, we were not necessarily aware of that. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Sure. So, to answer your question, um, <clears throat> the first time we were notified, um, we might have had general discussions during the aesthetic process and working through the architecture, but it was never conveyed that we were going to be over the building height or how it was going to be interpreted. And then we received a building permit, moved forward, and then it, and then it came forward to us uh, in April when the buildings were, were completed. Well, according to the paperwork, we have in the county of Kirtuck project approval dated 2-11-22 in bold. It states here the maximum mean roof height is 35 feet and height certification required. I mean, that, that's, that's uh, issued February 11th. Yes, sir. Upon receiving the uh, permit, which you have in your hand, um, we thought that the building height was going to be met because the, the staff approved uh, the permit and reviewed it. And by our interpretation of what uh, building height, it was going to be met. And what, what was your interpretation of it? Um, I'll let Adam handle this question as he's our um, uh, foreman out in the field. So yeah, the, the way that- Could you state your name and address just for the record? Yes, sir. Adam Beck, 1624 Bay Breeze Drive, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So the way that uh, the roof height we've, was measured and then even shown our plans was the 33 foot 11. So that showed right on our plans that were approved by Ron and Bill that you know we would, we would meet that height requirement. So when it said that in bold on the permit, we thought we were meeting that requirement per our, our plans and we followed that. Um, the oversight that we made was the additional two foot that was added and like Mark had mentioned, you know, that's that's kind of what we're proposing to you guys today. That's where the mistake was made and like we're admitting there was an oversight. Does that make sense? So measuring it originally before when you submitted the plans before the two foot was approved, you were at 3311. Yes, sir. Correct. And it shows on our building section page, it shows that measurement. And then you were uh, retroactively, you were required to lift it two feet. Yep. So add that, two feet to the bottom. Yes. And that note was added on the front elevation page. page. And then the building section page showed the 33 foot 11. So that's where the. And you resubmitted, resubmitted a building permit at that point? Yeah, they had asked us, hey, can you please add the, uh, the finished floor height note of adding the additional two foot on your elevation page. So, so we added that note as well as the two foot offset because they wanted the buildings to be st staggered to help with aesthetics. So we added those two notes that they requested and then, you know, received the building permit after that. Okay. Mr. Dahl, did that help answer your yeah. question a little bit? Yeah, it was good. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. 
I have your name down here to speak. Is there anything else you want to say while you're up there? No, sir. Okay. Thanks. Mr. Knapp, was there anything else you wanted to add? Um, we obviously changed building three to a 612 to, to be compatible with the, um, the measurements. And if we knew that this was a concern or a valid issue up front, we would have obviously um, inserted the 612 from the beginning so we wouldn't have this problem. Um, so if we, if we were made highly aware of the situation, I felt like we would have made the adjustment and done what was right. Uh, and fortunately, we're in the situation we are. So appreciate everybody's consideration tonight. Yes, sir. All right. Does anybody have any more questions for any of those gentlemen? I do. Um, okay. I just want to make sure I'm, I'm clear on this. Basically, you're saying that you weren't aware of the way it should be measured, the height that it would, that two foot made that that, that caused the issue. Is that correct? Because when Mark, in his presentation, there was a, one of the bullet points talked about the, the what's it, the finished, finished floor elevation, I think, was it, that it? That, that that came in under a different thing. If you'll go back. It uses the term established grade, and I, where is it? I think yeah. you know, there there could be different interpretations of what established grade is. I, in fact, I don't think it's actually defined in the UDO. Um, was, uh, Kevin and I were actually both. See, you talk in, about the two various, foot. Uh, what's that? I cannot read. Is it FFE? FFE, FFE, FFE amendment was, was adopted. adopted. I'm, I'm looking, looking at that second. second. This, this is, is the only development, development that was. That was has built 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 since the two foot race FFV amendment was adopted. Right. Okay. And there was something else that said you were not aware of that amendment. It had, there was a timing. When the amendment was adopted, which was which was with the Curatuck station, we didn't immediately recognize that that was going to apply to it. That, that so it applied to the current station. Right. Those and, and but that same standard was applied, was applied with the town. Okay. Was applied to the PDR. Okay. okay. So, so you guys were under the assumption that the 35 feet would be measured from the floor, finished floor, to the average roof line or mean mean roof line, not from the grade to the main roof line. Is that correct? Because that's what's throwing us off at two feet, right? I mean, that's what it's, okay. It's where do you measure from that's throwing it off. Okay. No, no, what Mr. Beck said is kind of throwing me a little bit that they submitted their original building and permit and the height of the, by their plans, measuring from the finished lot, it showed a 3311 okay. height limit. And between them starting construction, the, at right at the same time, it, it sounds like, correct me if I'm wrong, the two foot was voted on and, and and, and placed on them retroactively, and they resubmitted a new building permit. That's not correct. Okay. No, the um, two foot was voted on as part of Curry Tuck Station a year, maybe two before that. <clears throat> and it applied not to Curry Tuck Station, but to all multifamily. Ah, uh, okay. But before you started construction on the... Yes, it, so it applied to anything that hadn't been constructed yet. If, had they already pulled their building permits, it would not have applied. Okay.
Is that different from what you're saying? No, what I was saying was, so. Could, would you mind coming back up here so the microphone gets you? Yep. Um, the question was, you know, he said on the building permit, it was called out, you know, max height of 35 feet. On our building section height, where it calls out how we measure the mean max height, it called out the 33 foot 11. So to answer Mr. Dahl, it was like, how did you miss that? We, we followed that 33 foot 11. So we were under the interpretation that we were that we were okay. And that's that's what we were looking at, that 33 foot 11. The building section is a side view of the, the building and it shows we're at the starting point of measurement up to the, you know, the middle of the, the reverse gable, that middle point and how it's measured. So the starting point that you were looking at on that elevation was the established grade as opposed to the finished floor elevation? No, sir. It was, it was finished floor elevation. And again, that's where I'm admitting that we made the oversight. Um, when we learned about the two foot, that wasn't added on the building section page. And that's something that you know, I missed on my side. So it was corrected on the elevation page. Corrected on the elevation page. We added the note per their request for the two foot finished floor elevation requirement. It wasn't added to page six and seven, which are building section page. And that's where the, the error occurred. All right. Thank you for that clarification. So, so Tammy, it came in on uh, Curry Tuck Station. That's when the multifamily, multifamily standards multifamily were established homes, to this level. The standards were set under Curry Tuck Station. We had some, but not to the level of detail that the commissioners wanted with the architectural standards. Okay. And they added that two foot required elevation as For part of the review. They they took the Curry Tuck Station language, liked it, and applied it to all multifamily. Okay. Retroactively, which made it apply to them. Okay. Not not retroactively, but it applied to anything that hadn't been built yet. Okay. And when was that voted on by the commissioners? I, do you know when Curry Tuck Station uh, was voted on? I don't. I don't know about Curry Tuck Station. I believe that amendment was June 2020. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. Does anybody else have any more questions right now? Nope. Well, uh, it's time for public comment, but I don't see anybody here, so we're open and close the public comment. All right, is there any, any other questions or discussion for staff or these gentlemen or anybody? All right, hearing none, I'll open the floor for a motion. I'll make a motion. Uh, to recommend denial of PB 2211 Bissell Professional Group Multifamily Height and PDR because the request is not consistent with the imagined current plan action policy CC ACT 13, and the imagined current plan is to evaluate and strengthen standards to require new development to coordinate site design with nearby existing and future developments, allowing developments in the PDR district to exceed the height standards of nearby existing and future developments could be considered inconsistent with the plan and compatibility issues could arise. Action policy NMACT 15 of the plan is to incentivize incentive multi-story buildings that comply with design standards to encourage attractive mixed use developments. If this text amendment passes, the false development would not comply with the design standards set by the developer and enforced through the terms and conditions documents, preliminary plat slash use permit and final plat. And the request is not reasonable and not in the public interest because the proposed text amendment is not 
due to changed conditions as the maximum building height of 35 feet was established by the developer because the false PDR zoning district has height requirements solely for that district set by the developer exceeding the maximum defined height as is currently measured in the UDO is not consistent with the intent that was established in the terms and conditions document which limits the height to 35 feet. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Anybody? All right, well, that motion is not getting a second. So does anybody else want to make a different motion? this one to y'all to decide so somebody want to make a motion of, of some kind I, I do have another question though just all right well yeah. let's let's back up a second then and uh, what's your question when you look at this original the project approval that's dated February the 11th 2022 <coughs> And it talks about maximum mean roof height, 35 feet. And then it goes on to talk height certification required, building pad and finished floor elevation certifications required. Does that, that fin I'm just looking at that finished floor elevation statement there. Does, is there any implication with that wording that and again, this is this is just real that the measurements would be taken from. I'm just I'm I'm caught up on this. Can you repeat that again? Yeah, if you look at the um, what page are you on? I'm looking at this okay. right here. All right. The project approval. Yeah. When you go to the section that says maximum mean roof height is 35 feet, mm -hmm. and then it goes on to talk about height certification required, building pad, and finished floor elevation certifications required. Does that, is, is that fall, does that have anything to do with the way things are measured, Tammy? You know what I'm getting at? Yes, I do. Um, what the building pad and finished floor elevations are for or for proper drainage. The engineer sets the minimum building pad and the minimum say that run that together finish floor elevations to ensure proper drainage okay so, so that's, that's not more regarding drain, that's what yeah was that's something me separate was, from height yeah it was falling under right in the height yeah. section and yeah. that's why i looked at it it was it was worded right there after the 35 feet right and that certification would have also verified that the finished floor met that two foot required elevation Mm -hmm. over the established grade. Okay. So the certification that's noted in here that talks to about talks to the finished floor elevation certification, then that's where the two feet would have Right. That comes in once that finished floor is established. Okay. And the submitted plans showed 3311, but it actually is 30, what, 37? 11 is so it's 3511. Yeah, they showed the 3511 and then a note that said an additional two feet raised elevation. They just didn't add those two together. So the actual height of the structure that's out there right now is 3511. Not from grade. From grade, it's 37, 
36 what is it Kevin I think you've got the height oh. cert with you uh, I am not sure I have a height certification that was taken but we never worked out what grade oh, gotcha. that was was taken from Mark probably has it he did those I believe w would you mind would you mind answering it at the microphone Yeah, so right now, actually, and Kevin, you might remember, um, but right now, actually, the, the, the building, building height meets the requirement. It's at the 35 foot, but it doesn't meet the two foot because we had raised the mulch beds 11 inches to meet that 35 feet. So the latest measurement actually does work, but that was because we built up some of the mulch beds. Your, your 35 now, 11 measurement, where are you measuring from? No, as it sits today, as it sits today, as it sits today, it's thirty-four point nine. We had we had the mulch beds built up okay. to meet that requirement. So as you guys see in the picture, this meets the thirty-four point nine, but what it doesn't meet is the two-foot requirement. So what what we did was we built up the mulch beds to meet the height requirement. But you you're below then you're below the two-foot requirement. Then we're below the two-foot. So the we're missing on the two-foot requirement. With the 11 inches so whatever that math is 13 inches okay hopefully that helps thank you can, can i say one more yes thing? sir come I on think, you know there was i mentioned you know the definitions in the udo i think they added some confusion to this whole situation too because if you look at the definition of building height it says the vertical distance measured from the average established grade adjoining the building to the highest point of the roof surface of a flat or to the mean height between the eaves and the ridge of the gable. So it says, it refers to average established grade. And then it says established grade. Established grade is the finished grade following grading, excavation, or other land disturbing activity. So that could be interpreted, I think, a lot of different ways. I think Kevin offered an interpretation on that. Yeah, that was part of the discussion uh, we had is, you know, what constitutes that average grade um established grade and right finished grade. right um and so they did ask for an interpretation which i gave on june 10th uh and my interpretation was that finished grade and established grade were one and the same um that they weren't there was no difference between it between finished and average yeah, the finished so in other grade. Words, they, if you have a higher grade in the back of the house than you do in the front of the house, let's say there's a, a foot difference, then right. the average would be six inches. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. And, and, and typically, you know, the engineer who's certifying the height and, and the grade will find that average grade and take the measurements from it. I think. Um, what Adam alluded to was, you know, in the front of the property, that meets the height, 34.9 from that grade, but it doesn't meet the two feet elevation. From the rear of the property, it meets the two feet elevation, but then it would exceed the height. So, so that's, that's one, the, you mess up the other. Right, and that's where we found ourselves. That's how we, you know, got where we are. Okay. What's your interpretation of the actual height of the building that's currently there right now? Uh, yeah. Well, staff relies on the engineer certification, but what we would rely on is a certified height that from an established grade and then that two foot would be taken from the same grade um, as I understand it it is uh, approximately I think you mentioned 11 inches and that sounds about right so 35 but, 11 yeah somewhere in there all right Well, did that answer your questions? Yeah. Anybody have any more questions? All right. Well, uh,
we'll try again for a motion. Anybody want to make a motion? I'm going to make a motion for approval. I move to recommend approval of P. PB22-11 Bissell Professional Group Multifamily Height and PDR because the request is consistent with land use plan policies. The request is reasonable and in the public interest. Yeah, but then I have to insert some of the reasons and that's going to be a problem. That, that will make it, make it problematic. Hmm. So I'm gonna I'm gonna withdraw my motion because I'm reading this now, and because you have to in insert some of these policy numbers, and if they go against what I'm talking about, I got a problem. Is that the correct interpretation of it? I'm by reading this motion, I have to if I'm gonna make a recommendation for approval, I have to insert certain policy numbers which I cannot get to. I cannot. I don't have. Well, it's recommended that you use the text review standards that we had to review for the motion. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure if you need to cite specific uh, I, I policies. Don't, yeah, you don't necessarily have to cite specific policy numbers if you don't want to. I think you can just state your your, just in, your intentions, your reasons okay, that you I, believe. Okay, then I'm going to move to recommend approval of PB 22-11 professional group multifamily height and PDR because the request is consistent with the land use plan the request is reasonable in the public interest you do huh? have to put a reason why that's that you, what I'm wondering about that be, you feel that uh, is reasonable in the public interest to make a proper motion don't want to see them have to tear the roof off <laughs> And it can be as simple as, as you want to state it. It doesn't have to okay, be anything the, complicated. Then the request is reasonable in the public interest because uh, it would cause uh, an undue burden, burden on the builder to make the necessary adjustments to the structure. Is that good? Is that? It is the quickest remedy, yeah. I believe. Okay. All right, well, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Nay. No. Are you? Would you Aye. mind? Were you, were you for or against? Aye. We might need a show of hands. I couldn't. Are you for? Four. You're for? Mm -hmm. For the motion. For the motion. So we have uh, four to two? Is that three? Three to two. Three to three two. Three three two. two? Okay. And only they send it to the commissioners with a split. What's that? Motion passes. This will go to the commissioners for a public hearing on October the 3rd. Okay. All right. Well, that was the only item we have. And uh, next we have any, uh, does anyone have any announcements to make? No, I really don't uh, All right. tonight, except that if you know anyone who would want a career with Currituck County as a development technician in our corral office or code enforcement officer here on mainland, um, we are hiring for those two positions. And as I know you're all well connected with the community if anyone is interested you can send them my way absolutely please <laughs> <laughs> okay save you from having to drive to corral all right well anybody else all right well uh i'll open the floor for a motion to adjourn Make so moved. Second. all right approved <laughs>